Well, it's October, and of course, that is the month that we celebrate Halloween. It's a month of scary movie festivals on TV and haunted houses and haunted hay rides and all the things that kids and young adults really seem to enjoy at this time of the year, all in the name of being afraid. Why, even Dr. Fauci this year has given America's parents permission to go door to door and solicit candy. But there's something really frightening that's happening right now that makes Halloween just look like an absolute caricature, cartoonish foolishness when it comes to the real nightmare that none of us seem to be able to wake up from. And that is the growing overreach and tyranny that is not only being practiced in our country, it's now being accepted. Make sure you are a subscriber to my channel, smack the bell, click the word all to get notification of my rants, and like this video. I did a monologue regarding the interview that was done between Hugh Hewitt and one Dr. Anthony Fauci Stein, the evil love child of Dr. Kevorkian. And Hugh Hewitt tried to get Dr. Fauci to do something noble, other than just lie. He tried to get him to say, listen, if the data shows that you and your face and your messaging is hindering any advancement that we can really make as a country as a whole and, and gaining a foothold and an ultimate victory over the virus, are you willing to step down? And of course, that narcissist Fauci was not going to do anything even that remotely noble. Other people resign and step aside and get out of the way if they feel they are hindering a process, but not Dr. Fauci, because after all, Dr. Fauci thinks he knows best, and he has been deified in the minds of so many that he has even deified himself. And I am absolutely disgusted with Hugh Hewitt that he didn't really go after Fauci. Nothing of any real substance. Didn't, didn't call him out on his own misinformation that he was spewing about if you don't get vaccinated, you're going to be a super spreader, you're going to be you're going to be passing this on despite the fact that there is overwhelming data, that's your favorite word, Huey, data that shows that even the vaccinated can spread the virus. But you didn't call Fauci out on that. You, you talked about other people spreading misinformation, but you don't call Dr. Fauci out on it. You didn't go after him about the Wuhan lab. You didn't go after him really about anything. Absolutely nothing. And you certainly really didn't grill them on. How come every time we have a medication that's cheap, whether uh, uh, it be the hydroxychloroquine, uh, the, the so-called horse drug, uh, it, which it's not a horse drug at all, um, ivermectin, these things relatively inexpensively for a couple of bucks treat people, they get over it really quick, because it doesn't fit the narrative, it doesn't fit the overreach, why don't you go after him about that? Why don't you really go after him about natural immunity? Why, why didn't you press him? You say you're into science, Hubie. Why didn't you really press him about, hey, uh, whenever in, in history have we forced people who already have natural immunity to also go ahead and 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 get the vaccine. You pressed him on nothing. And Hubie, you are part of the problem. You are the lemmings that have said, I will line up, I will do as I'm told. And that's what all of these mandates are about. That's what the jab is all about. It is not about health. It is about absolute, total, complete control. And I want you Republicans to listen to me and listen to me carefully because you are being given a guided tour right now by the Democrats who are showing you very, very, very clearly when you have power, use the power. There are indicators everywhere that Joe Biden is imploding, that his administration is going to take the Democrats straight into the sewer. And they're not changing anything. In fact, they're doubling and tripling down as if 
they're letting us know ahead of time. Look, we understand that under normal, fair circumstances, what we're doing is committing absolute political suicide. They've got a border crisis. They've got unemployment rising. They've got interests rising. Everything is costing more. Things are slowing down. And then we have all of these overreaches and these mandates, which are killing the airline industry, killing the health care, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's as if they don't care because it doesn't matter what you do in November of next year, it's already in the bag. They already showed you that it's already in the bag. Are, are you, any of you... Republicans and rhinos waking up to any of this? But we are seeing absolute tyranny. Mandates. You will do as you're told. Now, we showed you that they have now decided that parents are our number one terror threat. Because parents, during the pandemic, as they watch some of their kids' Zoom classes and began to actually look at their curriculum, began to realize what they were being taught, and they didn't like it. And they said, oh, no. And to you parents, I would say, yeah, welcome to the party, but you're way, way late. Now, pull your head out of your backside, because at this point, really, if you think you're going to turn these schools around, you're dreaming. Get your kids out, either homeschool them, or get them in a good Christian or private school. Because the public schools are lost, and you allowed it to be that way. By being disengaged, and the only thing that you really cared about was your kid's basketball game or softball game, but you really weren't there to see not only what was being taught, but as you sit there and, and even with your friends talk about, you know, what's happening in our, our liberal universities and the mindset of these libloons, etc., etc., well, where do you think these libloons go to work after they finally get a degree? in your public school as your kid's teacher. Duh! Because these are not public schools anymore. These are government schools. They're not about reading, writing, and arithmetic. They are about social reengineering and indoctrination. They are getting a soft sell on socialism and wokeism and social justice, and that's what these kids are exposed to eight plus hours a day, and you asking them how their school day went in between passing food around the dinner table or watching a Netflix binge series together like Squid Games, in cutting it, you're not undoing the damage that's being done. And now that you've woken up to what your kids are being exposed to, you've turned out in mass to these school board meetings, and now you've been declared public enemy. How dare you? How dare you? And so now we are seeing what tyranny actually looks like. I'm going to show you two examples. Loudoun County, just a couple of days ago, I took you through a stroll down memory lane and showed you school board meetings from Loudoun County when the people were there, very upset over critical race theory, very upset over the fact that traditional Americanism is no longer being taught. They were being shouted down by radical members of the LBGTQ community that were there, and many of these people were thrown in handcuffs and dragged out. One was a father. And a father who is not anti-LBGT and their rights. In fact, he's very pro until he got arrested. And he was there not to protest anything. He was there because his daughter had been raped, sexually assaulted in a restroom in that school. And he went to the school board meeting that night to find out what's being done about this. And before he could actually tell his story, he's being thrown to the floor by police and then dragged out and then humiliated in front of the world. See, Loudoun County was one of the first schools boys and girls can use the same bathrooms. And again, that was all in the name of wokeness. And the Democrats wanted that law passed. They wanted gender-neutral bathrooms. And a boy wearing a skirt went into a girl's room raped her, and because it was covered up and never exposed, this man's daughter 
went into a restroom at the age of 14, was sexually assaulted, and he wanted to know what was being done about it. This story is one of the most disturbing I've ever worked on. It raises the possibility that the Loudoun County Public Schools covered up the rape of a 14-year-old girl at the hands of a boy wearing a skirt in order to pass a school policy that Democrats were adamant about passing. And as a result of concealing that, a second girl was raped last week. Uh, and to prevent all of this from coming out, potentially, they arrested the father of the victim, uh, tried to put him in jail, and he's now the face of domestic terrorism listed, by, uh, listed individually by the National School Boards Association, all for coming to that meeting. He didn't come to that meeting because he's a bigot. A lot of people thought they knew that guy. They trotted out his picture, his embarrassing picture with his belly hanging out and his bloody face. They all thought they knew him. They knew nothing about him. This was a caring father who was involved because of something very personal that happened to his daughter. And if they would have shut up and listened to him for 30 seconds, they would have been heartbroken. Instead, they demeaned him, they arrested him, and they tried to put him in jail. And he gets arrested. What happened to the kid that actually committed the sexual crime and assault? Why are these school board members and superintendent, why do they still have jobs? Because they are showing you their narrative is more important than the truth. Do you understand that's how tyranny works? You don't get news, you get propaganda. You don't get real information, you get what they want you to know and nothing else. And what they wanted you to know in this instance was well, we live in this utopia now where we are just going to accept everybody as they are and nothing could possibly go wrong letting boys and girls use the same shower facilities and the same bathrooms. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What freaking planet are you from? Seriously. What planet would teenage boys and girls being in the same shower room and bathroom be a great idea? But see, it's the narrative. And when a dad comes to find out what's going on, he's deemed the problem. He is beaten down. He is handcuffed. He is dragged off to jail. Way to go, Virginia. And the fact that the gubernatorial race there is, quote, close, there should be nothing close about it. The Republicans should be running away with this. And in California, again, I like Larry Elder, but he was the wrong man to be going up against Gavin Newsom. California, you, you deserve everything that you get under Newsom. You keep complaining about the homeless problem. You complain about that you've got no electricity, the runaway wildfires, and nothing's being done. Nothing's getting better. You decided to stick with Gavin Newsom. You deserve him. Rot in Hades, California. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. If I had my will, my way, you guys would be annexed and be your own private country and not another dime of federal tax money would ever go to you to bail out the lunacy, the idiocy, and just the rampant liblunism of California. Wyoming. A student there decided, I am not wearing a mask every day. Again, we're supposed to be following the science. There is absolutely zero scientific evidence when it says that wearing the hat is what will protect you. You can breathe through the hat, you can talk through the hat, you can smell through the hat. But nonetheless, their school board decided there in Wyoming that students all day had to remain in the hat. One student said, I'm not doing it. She got suspended. She decided, you know what, my parents and their taxes pay for this school. I am being suspended over not a behavioral issue. I am being suspended over a policy, a discriminatory policy. I'm going back to school. Upon her arrival, she was deemed as a trespasser. They called the police. She was arrested. Some of you have probably seen some of this video footage on your local news or Fox News or even CNN. This is some video footage. She was videoing the entire time she was being arrested. You know, first they just find her, then they waited an hour, and then they arrested her. During that time, for 90 minutes, the school was in lockdown. The officer, and you'll actually hear him say, you are putting lives at jeopardy. Why? Because a student showed up for school without a mask and she was breathing. 
and she gets arrested. Okay, so I'm gonna formally warn you of trespass. And if you wanna stay, you're gonna receive another citation for trespass. Okay. So you've been formally warned of trespass. Do you wanna leave the facility now? No. No? You wanna stay? All the doors are locked, man. So you wanna stay? How long are you planning on staying for? I don't know. Okay. I'm gonna go write the citation for you. I'm gonna let you know what's going on at this point. Okay. This entire building now is in lockdown. So you have now restricted the movement of over a thousand students who are not allowed to leave their classrooms because you're trying to get back into the classroom, which you are not allowed to do because you've been suspended, okay? Mm -hmm. We will wait you out for some time. I am going to warn you now. If this continues for a length of time to where I feel that we have now hampered the ability for every student in here to get an education, I will be placing you into handcuffs and I'll be taking you down to the jail. Okay. And I will remove you from the building. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, okay. This court day is November 16th at 9 o'clock right. in circuit court. Right. Any questions on that? Nope. All right. So you're still refusing to leave? Yes, sir. Even after you're receiving your citation? Yes, sir. All right. Then at this point, I am going to place you into custody for trespassing. Okay. Uh, go down to the jail. How's that sound? All right. You ought to be ashamed. All for a face mask? This is what tyranny looks like. This is what a police state looks like. We are seeing pockets of people pushing back. People are pushing back at school board meetings. And what happened? That maniac, Merrick Garland, the Attorney General, and his Department of Justice has now called these people domestic terrorists. We have students pushing back saying, wait a minute, I have rights. And what are they being given for their trouble? They're being arrested. There are kids out there looting, burning, raping in bathrooms. They're not being arrested, but a girl showing up to school without a mask on was taken out in handcuffs. And this isn't about health. This is about control. This is about leftist control. There is no more even pretense or illusion of freedom they are now flat out telling you the way America is going to look going forward is whatever we decide, you will comply or you will be arrested. This is what tyranny looks like. And sadly, we have a lot of immigrants here from China and Russia and other places that are screaming this from the housetops. Hey, this is what we ran away from. This is what it looks like. And we have the vast majority of Americans turning a deaf ear to this. Well, I'll just do what I'm told so they let me go back to life. So they let me go back to normal. If I got to get the jab to get on a plane, I will. No, bankrupt the airlines. We got pilots that have got more than passengers. Because, again, what happened with Southwest wasn't scheduling issues. It was, it was a sick out. Because they can't strike because of federal law. But the pilots and the airline workers are sending a very clear message to the powers that be. Hey, this is what life is going to look like if you fire 40 to 45% of your workforce. And it isn't just passenger delays. How much of our stuff through the supply chain is done via air freight? So I think this, unfortunately and sadly, won't get the attention of the average American until their 24 to 48 hour prime delivery from Amazon takes two weeks. Mm. Again, we've already talked about this, but... You know, sometimes you got to keep repeating so people, information sinks in. The maniac governor in New York laying off, firing 72,000 healthcare workers. Why? They're not vaccinated. Obvious question is why are healthcare workers refusing the jab? But, you know, that's another discussion for another time. So her solution was we will bring in the National Guard and retired Healthcare workers. Well, there's a reason they're retired. One, they're either old or B, they just want to get on with their lives. They, they, they left the busyness of healthcare. But now, but now we're going to bring in 
you know, the National Guard, they'll, they'll fill the vacant, the 72,000 vacancies, really? So Lloyd, the guy that runs the auto parts store in, you know, Bonesboro, New York, <laughs> he's a weekend warrior for a little extra scratch on the side, you know, gets to, gets to play G.I. Joe one weekend a month. Now we're going to bring him in to a big city ER somewhere because he's had first aid training and now he's going to replace one of the 72,000 healthcare workers that's a trained professional licensed doing continuing education who just a year ago we were calling heroes. They're now zeros and fired because they didn't take the jab. And the dirty tr secret to all this is the military isn't even required to have this vaccination until June of 2022. So you're taking experienced, competent healthcare workers just because they're unvaxxed and you're moving them out and you're now bringing in military, untrained, not professional, and not vaxxed. And again, because this isn't about health, this is about you as the governor have decided this and you're in charge. It's tyranny. Ask the residents of Michigan what it's like to live under a tyrannical governor. The residents of New Jersey. The residents of Pennsylvania. This is what it looks like, people. And trust me, this is more frightening than anything they're going to show on 31 Nights of Fright on television for Halloween. That's it for this rant. Don't forget to check out the other channel.